Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. 300 Rise of an Empire Movie Thoughts So... I guess we'll start with the title. I guess Persian Empire. Let's let's go with that because Greek Empire not really not so much. It's, yeah, didn't didn't really didn't really particularly happen here. Not not at this point in in the overall time, you know, history timeline kind of thing. Let's go with Persian Empire. Excuse me. Rise how so? We see Marathon, sure, but that was not really, you know, they, they seemed plenty powerful at the time, so do they rise from Marathon? Hardly. And this doesn't really go that much into, sure we see some of Xerxes' background, but, or, you know, we, we see him before he becomes God King, and we see him after, and that's about it. There's there's not really anything to that. I, I watched this with a friend of mine and my father, and, and we, we talked about the, the rise, and it was suggested, maybe it was supposed to be the fall of the empire. Oh wait, that didn't really happen either, because this was really, as I said in the review, this is just about preventing the invasion of Greece by Persia. This is not about, you know, decimating their empire or building one of our own, you know. So, yeah, it, it really didn't make sense. I, I understand that at, at one point it was called Xerxes. That would make sense if the story was more about him, which I understand it was at one point. And later it was called Artemisia, or the Battle of Artemis... Ar Artemisium, sorry, or the Battle of Artemisium. That would have made sense, but I understand that, like, the title was deemed too exotic, and that really is too bad, because that would have made for a much more fitting title, because really, Artemisium is, you know, rather important to this. The, the Battle of Artemisium is where most of the film's action takes place, I suppose. Now, the... I... I thought it was a little silly that, again, we have this... You know, the Spartans are really the heroes here, so when they arrive there at the end, of course, the, the battle is won, and so, in, you know, it doesn't take long before they've just taken over, and the film ends, you know, mid-fight. And it's just, you know, that, that led to a discussion between the three of us whether there might be a third movie, but really, there's not much. There, what, what story is there left to tell? The, the only thing we didn't see here was the Battle of Plataea. You know, I mean, they've pretty much prevented the, you know, they, they've won at, at Salamis, you know, with, with the, I mean, sure, they could show the rest of that battle, but if they did a third movie, would they again, would they have another sequence of events concurrent with the other two? It, yeah, it's, the, the existence of this movie alone is not really necessary. You know, so, yeah. I rather like Lena Headey, honestly, until she started cutting people down. I did not think that she would wield the sword in a believable manner. I know, I know, Dread, 
the Sarah Connor Chronicles. I don't know what exactly made me doubt her action chick cred, but there you go. And Ava Green has officially earned her action chick cred because, man, that, you know, you talk about Xerxes' old ball and chain, and I don't mean that in any kind of insulting manner. I actually, I rather think she enjoys, you know, balls and chains. That was one angry sex scene, and yeah, that was really a rather effective kind of exploration of that, of the love-hate relationship. I like that these are the things we see them do. They screw and they fight. You know, they, they duel. This is the, the, these are the things that are kind of, yeah, it's, it's not the kind of thing you'll see in a lot of movies, but it really is the kind of thing where you know, I mean, they're they are sworn enemies, and they hate and want to destroy each other, but they do respect each other's craft, because both are excellent tacticians. So, yeah, there is some attraction there as well. And, yeah, it's, I mean, they could easily have killed, or it's, it's really, she could have killed him. You know, it's, I mean, he, he goes there without his sword or anything. You know, neutral waters, so there's that, but, you know, all of these, you know, guards of hers around, you gotta love when it cuts out to the, the immortals and they're, like, looking at each other with the, the masses. That's, that's funny. And, I, I do think that it was silly to have her be discovered by the Persian emissary who gets, you know, this Espartad at the beginning of the first movie. And that's not a spoiler, that's literally, like, in the trailers for the first movie. Anyone who knows anything about the first movie knows that this is the guy. And at first I was like, that's not really, and then I, yep, it's, that's, that's, who that is. that's, that's literally, I mean, that's, that's this kind of fan y kind of thing of, oh, and that character was actually this other... So are we to take it that there is some scene we just didn't see where she is, like, dismayed with the fact that, you know, or furious, rather, that, you know, her, her mentor was killed by you know, Spartan dropkick, or, yeah, is, is that at all going to be, a, if, if they're going to put the character in there, excuse me, at all, and it's clearly the same character, it's even said in the narration that she was found by a Persian messenger or emissary or something like that, and that's kind of the... Yeah, and, and then they don't even follow up on it by having her say, I want Leonidas dead, you know, I mean, she could have gone to Xerxes and been like, you know, this, this man must, must die, you know. I did like that there was eventually some conflict between the, you know, between Xerxes and Artemisia. That was, that was quite nice that, you know, and he you know, smacks her across the head, and, yeah, and, and she mutters to herself, you just stay here, in the safety I provide you with, you know, that was, that was great, and, yeah, the, 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 the thing of, and, and that again, you know, goes into the, the relationship, love-hate relationship between her and Themistocles, when she hears that Themistocles is still alive, she goes out, she doesn't even send, like, a troop, you know, she's like, are you lecturing me on warfare now, you know, is that, is that what's going on? Because I think, I, I think that's what I'm hearing, and I just, 
Yeah, you know, and and she she has the stones to you know to, to yell at Xerxes to his face like that. That's that's pretty seriously badass. One thing I did think, and this was something that my father also pointed out, given that you know when she first decapitates the you know the guy who's the best fighter of the the captives but not the smartest she you know cuts his head off completely and you know briefly makes out with it when she was stabbed by Themistocles she should have come closer and made out with him as a sort of bookend to that you know of her her love affair with death you know she has sold her soul to death itself, which, yeah, it, I, I'm not entirely sure if that's like a, a level above or below a Faustian deal. And then you, then you have the whole thing with Jin, which is, never mind. The, the, yeah, Ever, Evergreen was just awesome in this, the whole thing, there really wasn't anything where she wasn't just fantastic. I yes, to to I, I need to go into some of the different tactics. I really liked the. I, I think my favorite was probably the the cliff thing where you know they're like. You know they're just standing still in the water and the Persian ships come in, and then. Row backwards, you know, and they row backwards. Well, follow them, and it's like, oh, there's fog. Keep following them. They've got to be in here. And suddenly, you've got this this narrow, you know, cliff kind of thing. If you know whatever the word is, mentally substitute. I'm pretty sure it's not cliff, but it's been a while since I've used American geographical terms. Geological. G, logical. I apologize. I am. I am tired. And the the they get in between, you know. And it's clear. It's very hot gates ish. Very Thermopylae. And several of them just crash against the cliff faces there. And the ones that do go in, they eventually come to this wooden dam that the Athenians built there, or the Greeks at least and crash against and then they come running from up above and jump down and chop and yeah that was that was really awesome and you've got the thing of them being smaller and more maneuverable so they kind of sail around and ram from both sides the the ships of you know i love the shot of of or the the couple of shots inside the the Persian slave, slave road ships, you know, where the, you can see all the blood from their, their fingers from the, and cuts to their back. You can see all these, you know, thick, wide scars of, from all the, you know, from, from all the lashes. And then the guy comes over with the lash and, whoosh, you know, just, blah. And... The, the boat with the, the oil or, or tar, we we're discussing it, the, maybe like a mixture of oil and, and tar, some, some kind of thing, and you're obviously very flammable, and they throw the fireballs, you've got the fire arrows, and you've got the suicide bombers that... Okay, see, this one is maybe one to be offended by, Iran. It's, all I'm saying is, this one literally has, you know, pre-Iran suicide bombing, kind of, that's all I'm saying. And, yeah, you know, you've got one, and Themistocles is like, abandon ship, and he should have taken his own advice, and then he's, you know, being thrown into, and, and you have the... You know, they, they only use the first-person perspective a few times in this film, but they do use it well. You know, you've got these giant 
eel kind of things that are eating, and suddenly it comes at the camera, and then Themistocles wakes up on, you know, the beachhead. And uh, also at the end, it's like they chop at you. I think it's Themistocles who attacks you, attacks the camera with the sword, and that, you know, makes the... Yeah, so, so those were quite, quite nicely done. Well chosen. Now, I, I had expected that Ephialtes would have a bigger part in this from what I had read, or a bigger role, I should say. I suppose how big his part is, is known only to him and whoever makes the, the clothes for him, but... You know what they say, I mean, the size of a man's hump, I just indicate. That is terrible, and I should apologize, but I will not. The, yes, his, his role was, I, I like that, you know, he, when we first see him, he is, you know, fresh from betraying Leonidas, and he sort of comes up, you know, he actually, I guess he takes the, the hat off, which is good, because it makes him look really silly, and I'm not sure he ever puts it back on again, so there's maybe a subtle kind of, I mean, he clearly is, he does feel bad, I mean, he does say directly to, you know, Themistocles, you should, you know, go ahead and kill me, there's nothing beautiful in me, so, you know, but, but yeah, I like that he kind of becomes... And he's he's essentially symbolic to both parties. He didn't it didn't even need to be a person. It might as well have been a, a figure. But basically, Xerxes sending him to Athens is telling the Greeks the the reason the Spartans failed was because of one of the Spartans. And him being sent back to Xerxes, even with the the you know, what's it called? the location to meet them is Themistocles saying back to them yeah, so, come at me bro, you know, kind of thing. They're, they're both taunting the other with Themistocles being sent back and forth. You know, it's, it's actually very reminiscent of childhood, kind of. Including the hump, come to think of it. So, I did quite feel that, you know, the, the idea of Xerxes becoming a god-king, you know, the, the Artemisia saying that it wasn't a warning, it was a challenge, you know, only the gods can defeat the Greeks, so you just have to become a god, and they you know, they rub him in oil and they send him on his merry way, you know. I've done that. I didn't expect the guy to come back as a, as a god king. He did, of course. But no, I, I mean, I sent him out hoping that he wouldn't return. So, yeah, the... Actually, yeah, Artemisium probably watched Lost too. That, that explains that, actually. So anyway, yes, the, the, you know, he's, he's, he's quite, he's quite distraught, you know, his, his father dies, and then he decides, well, I'll be a god, and we've all gone through that phase, and too many of us got those same piercings, in fact. I, I really did feel that he did not get to do or say enough in this. I mean, his the the brief appearances by him in 300 are fantastic, but here it's not really, you know, that important. I mean, you see almost all of it even just in the trailers. Now, the... I suppose that almost covers it. Now, I 
did come to think, I mean, there, there's the... There's the bit where basically, you know, Themistocles is telling his troops, you know, I, we, we are still a democracy, you know, you, you can go it. I just, I wanted him to turn around and say, no, wait, I, I was being, it, do you not know what rhetorical means? Which is actually a little ironic because I bet that is like a Greek word originally or, or possibly Latin, but something along those lines. But yeah, I mean, him saying, you know, you know, no, just, just go. I'll, I'll, I'll be fine without you. I, I, I did not realize that Themistocles was actually a Jewish mother. But there you go. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.